Hey, songwriters. Welcome to At Home Songwriting. Today, we're talking to Matthew French. He's a singer-songwriter from here in Minnesota, and we want to find out some of his craft and techniques with his own songwriting. So, Matthew, welcome to the, the channel. Thanks so much, Chad. Really appreciate you having me. Tell me a little bit about how you got started in music and, and, and kind of what you've been up to most recently. I did a lot of church music and growing up kind of in that youth group sort of thing, playing guitar in the band at church. And, and then um, I, I actually did that, led music in a church for, for a while as, um, you know, kind of playing guitar and singing and doing the whole, you know, Sunday and Wednesday kind of a thing. And I was sort of, I was writing songs here and there at that point in my life, but I wasn't really focused on the songwriting craft at that point. Um, further along in my journey, I, what really sort of kicked me into gear into songwriting was I got divorced in 2014. And it was, you know, obviously that's a huge event in one's life. And I was like, I should really do something that something that's both in my heart and something that's good for me, you know, rather than rather than sitting around playing video games or something of that nature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about some songwriting? Um, and that's really when I when I, you know, kind of dove head into the songwriting world. So the, I think, you know, a lot of songwriters, even myself included, there are life events that sort of lend itself well to wanting to express yourself or not even wanting, but sometimes it's like you have to express yourself in those those moments. Um, obviously, that was a few years ago. When you think of songwriting now, what does it mean to you at this point in in time? Yeah, I would say, you know, comparatively at that point, it was like, oh, I really have a lot that's in, inside of me that I need probably need to say but I couldn't say that in a conversation or couldn't put it in the right words if I was, you know, talking to you or talking to anyone else. But if I wrote it in the song, there's some some way that I can say something that, you know, really gets out what's inside of me. And at that point, it was, you know, more of a more of this sort of release valve sort of thing. And now I would say it's more become this. Um, this exciting thing that I'm chasing. It's, you know, getting the next song, um, crafting the next song, finding the right lyric, finding the right chord, finding the right, you know, melody to match that is like, uh, um, is the carrot on the stick for me. And it's the most, it's, it's probably the most thrilling thing in my life to be able to, to be able to chase those things down. How would you describe your style? I would say that I think there's an there's an honesty in the lyricism. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to trick anybody. Um, I think there I I do try to be clever in ways that I can be, um, but I think you know I'm looking for I'm looking to tell you what's in my heart, and I would say that there's there's that piece, and then there's a laid back nature. I mean I think my my general demeanor is just kind of. Um, kind of really calm and collected most of the time. Not that I don't, not that, I, <laughs> not that I don't get worked up like the rest of us, but um, I would say there's like a, I try to put a calmness in my songs. And I've, I've found that I think starting from that point of the big life event um, really um, took me down this path of sometimes you're singing about sadness but let's bring it back around to some type of hopefulness that comes out of that song as well. And I think that's, you know, for me been, ha, has been something that um, I've heard from listeners and I've felt myself in the songs. So you're not just writing depressing songs all the time. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, some of, some of them feel that way sometimes, but, it, the, but I sure. you try to like, you try to just bring it just around enough to that hopefulness. So I know there's a song that you released, um, I think it was this spring, a, a song called Man in the Yellow Chair. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that some, you had gotten some local exposure through a video that you had done and those types of things. Tell us about that song, you know, because I was listening to it today and I listened to it when it first came out and it just, it seems really relatable, even though the situation isn't what something that happened in my life, if that makes sense. So yeah. tell us a little bit about 
how that came to be and what does that song mean to you? I feel like this one was kind of special to you. Yeah, it really was probably the, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it here. Um, that actually came from the songwriter challenge, uh, a picture prompt and the picture was a gold chair and, um, the, my grandfather who passed away in 2004, um, in his kitchen, he had a yellow table and chairs. It was probably from the fifties or sixties. And that thing still lives in my parents' basement to this day. But that was the place where he sat and, and smoked his cigarettes and read his paper. And anytime you would go to his house, that was where you had the, just the most wonderful conversations with him. And so this picture of the yellow chair brought me, it was one of those like very serendipitous moments as a songwriter where a song hits you more than you going after the song. Um, one of those that came out fairly quickly. Um, and I never really, I don't know that I ever really uh, got to process my grandfather's death. We were really close and I don't know that I ever sunk in deep enough to understand what he meant to me until this song came around. And um, that song actually appears, is going to appear on an, an upcoming album that I have as well. Um, and I, I, I text my, my friend, Chris, who, um, who I recorded the album with, I text him a couple of weeks back and I was like, you know what? I may never write another song like this. And that's, okay with me because the the one that you know there's there's certain songs and I know you know this as a songwriter that they just stick with you and they have a special place in your heart and and that one is one that will that I'll forever be proud of because of the man that it that inspired it well I think you know as songwriters it's our goal I think to make listeners feel something because we've all felt something through music in parts of our life. And I think anyone who's in music or a fan of music at all, music has like this magic to be like a time capsule. Like when you listen to it, it brings people back, it brings time back, it it does all of those things. I just feel like in the song that you wrote, it's like I can feel the importance in your life, but there's something about the song that it I can relate to it, even though the facts that are in it don't necessarily match my life, which I think that's that's like that's like the gold, right? When you're when you're writing a song, I think that's what you aim for. So I would yeah. probably ask you, like, how did you do it? But it sounds like it was just one of those <laughs> channeling moments. It really was. It's been interesting. And I don't um, I don't play that song often live. Um, you know, when you're playing an annoy, I don't necessarily want to play that one in a noisy bar when when people aren't necessarily focused in just because of the, yeah. you know, the the place of honor that my grandfather has in, in my life. But when I have gotten a chance to play that for for people who are intently listening, it's just been fascinating to to hear how many people related. Oh, we had a table like that at my house or just some element in the song that maybe wasn't like, you know, the whole thing wasn't factually true in their life, but it, yeah. but there was something that brought them back to a moment. And I think yeah. that, like you said, gold, that's a, the perfect way to describe it. What does your process look like? You know, how are you, you know, and this is the magic question, you know, a lot of songwriters say like, well, do you start with lyrics? Do you start with music? And you know, the answer is like, yes, right? Like it can come <laughs> in different ways, but do you have a, process that you follow or or what's that because songwriting is different for everybody what's it look like for you for sure i i try to have multiple paths to get there um i you know of course i'm a part of the singer songwriter challenge that you mentioned where we get a word prompt and we have a certain period of time to write a song uh to that prompt typically in that scenario when i get a prompt i'll you know try to give it some time, like just go out for a walk and think about that word and write some, uh, some things that that word brings to mind. Um, and it might just be a bulleted list. It might be, uh, it might be a full lyrical line. It might be a hook line or, 
just anything that 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 word triggers in my mind uh, and then build around that. Um, I, I think, you know, there are always the songs that every once in a while you'll get, it, you'll get a song that just hits you. And I try to, you know, you, you got to keep the notes app handy in your phone. <laughs> my process looks like, you know, I, I, I think in the last couple of weeks, there's been a few times where I just got a line or two in my head and I needed to, to jot that down really quick. I needed to put it in a voice memo on my phone. Um, that's a piece of the process for me as well. I find often that a lot of my best songs are um, start with me just sitting down to play the guitar. So whatever your instrument is, you know, if you're um, if you're not if you're not sitting down to play that or do that, um, I, I think you, we put ourselves at a disadvantage in our songwriting um, because you know that's ultimately what the song is going to be built around, anyways. Um, so I find that a lot of my songs start there with, I'm just picking something on the guitar and all of a sudden uh, a line comes out of my mouth and I go, well, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know that you said you started doing church music and, and you really weren't songwriting necessarily at first. Going back to when that started, what did that look like for you? Was it Was it a conscious thing or did you just kind of evolve into it? What, what was that for you? Into the songwriting piece? Yeah, like what did that process look like? Yeah, I, you know, obviously, as I mentioned, it was a, it was a big life event that the whole songwriting thing started around. And I would, in those days, I would go and, and sit in coffee shops and read books and drink coffee. And um, I remember it was a, it was a, uh, it was a, one of these super cold Minnesota winter days and I was in a coffee shop and, and the, the snow was kind of, you know, blowing around like it does here in the winter, just a very light, you know, kind of dusting sort of thing. And a line about the winter snow came to my head. And that sort of kicked off something in my brain that's like, oh, it's time to write this and it's time to, um, you know, so I wrote that one song and I think you know, any of us as songwriters would know that when you write the one song, there's like this, there's like this thing that happens almost a high that happens. That's like, I got to get to the next one. And, um, you know, you want to keep getting to the next one and the next one, it, the more and more that you write. Um, and I think it's, a, you know, obviously there's, it's not just the, um, it's not just the magic moments like that or the yellow chair moment, there's work involved in it. And there's time involved in it, um, yeah. but really, anything you want to 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 really go after, you invest in. Did you find yourself studying songwriting? You know, obviously, there's a lot of books out there. There's a lot of you know YouTube stuff. What was your sort of education, or what did that look like for you? Yeah, I think you know, I I never really did a ton of studying on the craft of songwriting, but I studied songwriters and i found myself you know like i'd be writing a song and i would use a you know a lyrical method or a rhyme scheme or something like that and i'd go oh that's something that so and so would do um so i never really thought about uh you know i never opened a book to look at the craft of songwriting but i studied the craft of songwriting by the by the people that i was listening to who were some of those people do you have influences that you sort of gravitate towards? Yeah, there are a couple of people that I really respect as songwriters. Um, Peter Bradley Adams is, is one name. Um, and he's a, you know, he's, he's kind of a, just an acoustic songwriter and, um, you know, writes really, writes really relatable, but, uh, but beautiful lyrics. Um, David Ramirez is another one that I, that I really love. He's just the guy that like you, you listen to the songs and each, each one rips your heart out in a different way, <laughs> kind of just very raw and emotional. He's a big one. Um, you know, certainly, certainly there are songwriters around here that I really respect as well. That's another thing that when I started writing songs, I just went out to as many possible shows that I could go to not to, you know, 
of course I, I went out to like, I wanted to meet these songwriters, but I wanted to like soak in just as much of the magic that they have. And sure. I find that to this day that that's one of my favorite things to do is um, to just go and soak in other songwriters. And I think that it's kind of like this, this osmosis sort of thing. Um, but it's also, there's a synergy that happens there, you know, perhaps, um, you know, I learned from them and perhaps we can collaborate, or maybe if we never collaborate on an actual song, we can collaborate in a conversation and inspire each other that way. So I find that it, you know, it it's snowballs. Helps. Yeah. I find that like seeing other songwriters and just being exposed to the craft of songwriting is an inspiration for me. Like yes. even just listening to a new song will spark like, oh, I want to do music again, you know, because I think we all go through these ups and downs where we write a lot and then we don't write very much. And or at least I do. I shouldn't speak for you. But um, but I remember going to different shows and specifically back when Prince was alive, I had gone to a couple shows at Paisley Park and had gotten to see Prince perform. And I remember during the parts where he was just like jamming, I remember thinking like what he's doing is not that different than what I've seen a lot of other artists and even myself do. So it's almost like a confidence builder to be like, I can do that. You know what I mean? So do you feel that way as well? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's some things that you can, uh, you can glean from any artist at any level. I find, you know, when you get to, you you know, seeing a show at Paisley Park in this sort of more, more intimate setting, you're not in a stadium with a bunch of people, yeah. um, or I, I find that I gravitate towards like smaller venues now for, for that reason, so that I can see an artist and, and what they do and how they do it, how do they connect with people whether there's a, you know, I saw Peter Bradley Adams, the, the artist that I mentioned, I saw him here in Minnesota um, probably a couple of months ago and it was at the entry and it was sort of right when, when venues were starting to open up and um, there were, there were not a ton of people in the venue that night. Um, it was at the seventh oh. street entry. And at one point he and his guitar player came out into the crowd and, and unplugged their guitars and just, played an acoustic song awesome and it was it, and there's just these moments like that of uh, you know these artists have been down the road and they've seen it all venues that were packed shows with nobody and they they're they're still out there on the road doing it for the love and they find ways to connect with people where they are and i think that's such an inspiring thing I know earlier you said you you use the word chasing. You're kind of chasing the songwriting thing now. What are some of the goals that you have with your writing? Yeah, I you know, I think it's I feel like at this point writing is still therapeutic for me. Uh, feeling feeling the sense of accomplishment, uh, being able to share things. It's still a um, it's still a, a way for me to say things maybe that I couldn't say in a conversation. Um, I think in the, in the chasing standpoint, it's certainly not chasing like a fame and fortune, you know, it, you, as you and I talked about before, it's like corporate America in the day. And then you, <laughs> you know, you put on the, the Superman, Superman cape and try to be a songwriter in the evening playing gigs and things like that. Um, yeah. I, I think the chasing is just the, you know, it really is about the song. How can I get better? How can I become a better songwriter? How can I become a better communicator and connector with people? Well, and I think that's, that's what this channel, I think I want it to be about is that, you know, I have a day job, you have a day job. There's a lot of people out there that music is a huge part of their life, even if it's not how they pay their bills. Right. And I think, our society instantly thinks, well, do you do this for a living? And somehow that makes it more authentic or something. But the reality is, is you can do a lot on your own in, in your spare time. Um, sure. You mentioned an album. So are you writing and recording an album or, or what is that process looking like for you? Yeah. So we, we recently finished recording the album. I've got a, um, the album is called Two Sides. And so I'm fittingly releasing it in side one and side two. 
Cool. Um, side one will be out in late January, and then um, the other side will follow in probably March or April. So uh, pretty excited. It's been, uh, it was 2018 that I released my last full length album. So, you know, had a couple of, had a couple of singles in between there and things like that, but uh, this will be the first full length since then. And your website is mfrenchmusic.com, correct? If people want to check that out. That's it. Thank you so much. And then uh, also just search for Matthew French on any of the, the streaming sites, your stuff pulls up as well. Yes. Yeah. You can find me on all of the, all of the streamers under Matthew French. What do you think as a songwriter, what are some things you want to work on in your own writing? I think that, uh, you know, there, there are certain artists that, that's, that super inspire me by their descriptiveness. Um, you know, when I, when I, I use the word honest in my songwriting that I kind of described earlier in, uh, I think that for me tends to lean towards simplistic language. Like I'm not thinking about the most descriptive way to say something. So the way that I would write a line in my song, some of the more inspiring people that I know in my life would just, they'd say the same thing, but they would say it in such a, such such a beautiful way that I, that I still am working on. Got it. Do you co-write a lot or are you kind of a solo writer or what does that look like? Yeah, I do co-write here and there. Um, you know, I think I, I, most of my writing is solo, but I'm always open for a co-write. It's sort of fun to, um, you know, you always get, you always get some good perspective there on other people's process but you also, it, it's fun to see a song come together and where you get some characteristics of yourself in the song, but you also get some characteristics that maybe you wouldn't have put in there that make the song that much better. For sure. And I'm, I'm similar. Like I will do co-writing every once in a while, but for the most part, I'm doing my own stuff. It's kind of a solitary thing for me. And yeah. I just, that's kind of how it's always been. I agree. I think I, you know, like I said, therapeutic in lots of ways does your i know you said that the album is two sides is there mm -hmm. a, a theme besides just having two sides is there an underlying sort of topic or is that still top secret or what is what is that right now yeah no i can share a little bit more about that uh cool. originally so i wrote the song two sides a couple of years back and it's it was really about a song a song kind of about turning the page on the past and uh, I didn't really think that it would ever make an album. Um, and here we are, it ends up being the title track. Um, <laughs> but thinking about that, you know, I was discussing, you know, discussing the album with a friend um, uh, about a month or so ago. And we were talking about how, um, you know, uh, lots of divisiveness in the world over the last couple of years since I wrote the song, Two Sides, and um, really this kind of this theme that keeps coming, that keeps coming up through the album is, um, you know, finding common ground. Um, yes, we might have two sides, but there's a place in the middle where we can all meet. Um, and if there are, you know, we're all going through rough times, bad days, and, um, you know, there's, a, there's light, there can be light tomorrow. And that's really kind of the, you know, I, I, it's neat to see an album come together in that way. Cause I don't know that I, I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't plan for the album to morph into what it, what it came out to be. Um, I think the, that's a, a really special thing about songwriting as well. You write it in a, you write it in a certain context within your own life. And maybe by the time other people get to hear it, things will have happened in the world that, that give that new meaning. I also agree that what you start a project as a lot of times isn't where it ends up to because it sort of takes on a life of its own. And I love that you're actually writing an album because a lot of people now just do singles and, yeah. you know, they just do that. But I'm still kind of an album person. I really, I really like a collection of songs that kind of have some sort of connection to each other. Um, so that's, that's fun. Are you releasing it just digital or, or what format are you planning on releasing it? 
Yeah, so each of the each of the sides, quote unquote, uh, side one and side two have five songs on them, and uh, those will be released digitally. So on all the streaming services, and then when we get to the end, we'll have a full full album print version, you know, with actual discs and things like that. Cool. When you said sides, I wondered maybe about vinyl because you know vinyl's coming back. Yeah, I know. I really <laughs> would. I, I'm I've, I'm thinking about it. It's a it's there's always like a a huge monetary investment in that kind of thing. Yeah, darn it. <laughs> yeah, I know. So if someone's watching this and they're a new songwriter or someone who is just kind of dabbling, do you have any advice for for someone in the years of experience that you have? Yeah, I would say first and foremost, go listen to other songwriters, um, pay attention there, um, you know, see what they do, how, how, how their songs go, how they perform, things of that nature. Um, listen to, you know, find some artists that you, that you aspire to be like and listen to them a lot. And, you know, again, pay attention to like the way that they use rhymes or the, um, you know, kind of the way that they, they format their songs. And um, lastly, I would say, be yourself, because that's the best thing that you can be in the songwriting world. Um, you know, I'm never going to be someone else, and someone else is never going to be me. And you have something very special to offer in the songwriting world. So if it's something that you're passionate about, do it. Um, I will say one other thing on this topic. When I was first kind of like doing the songwriting thing, I was, you know, holed up at home doing my songwriting. And of course, at some point, you want to get out there and play them for people. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask is the last thing that I will say on the topic. I, I remember asking the first venue that I uh, performed at. I remember asking, um, finding out who did the booking and asking them if I could get a slot. And I'm not typically the type that will ask. And that was like a, that was a, that was a step for me in the music world, but that was also a step for me in the personal world. And I think cool. you'll find that as you, um, as you take different steps in the songwriting process, you'll find other, other pieces in your life where you gain, you gain more confidence, you gain more knowledge and um, so, yeah. Do you list your gigs on your website where you'll be performing? I do, yeah. So you cool. can kind of see it's like the, you know, the whole bands in town thing that's that's happening there. Awesome. Well, Matthew French, thank you so much for, for joining us, you know, here at At Home Songwriting. This has been great. So again, mfrenchmusic.com is the website and, you know, watch for the albums coming out and search for Matthew French. But anything else you want to, kind of wrap up with here today? I just want to say thank you, Chad. I think this is uh, such a great thing. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are, that are doing this at home, at home thing. And I think there is, you know, as we talked about a little bit, there's this tendency to think that if you're not out there under the big bright lights, then you're not, you're not doing it, but you're, you're the work that you do at home matters. The work that you uh, the, the time that you put in, you know, playing and playing in a noisy bar that matters, um, your creativity matters. And it's something that, um, that makes the world a better place. So keep doing it, everybody. Mm -hmm.